the foundation that Jesus laid should lead us to who? the Holy Ghost you'll see it over and over and over again in scriptures that it's leading you to him the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words my name is Andrew Hemstrad I thank you for joining us if this is your first time here make sure that you subscribe if you've been here for a while consider becoming a partner with us we thank you for it Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ let us go on to what perfection. perfection so does this mean he wants us to not have anything to do with the principles of the doctrine of Christ yeah. to just leave them like leave them behind no he's saying we we should already have a foundation that we can build on and to go on to perfection not laying again the foundation so you don't leave the foundation right. you build on the foundation That's right. not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and now he's going to go on here and list several things that he considers a foundation the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God wow that's a pretty big foundation isn't it faith towards God there's a lot of stuff in that verse 2 of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands should we lay hands on people yes yes it's part of our doctrine it's part of the foundations of our doctrine what if people don't like it obey. who are we going to obey mm -hmm. we're going to obey God and of the resurrection of the dead it's a foundation of our doctrine that we shouldn't have to lay over and over and over again we should we should take it you know because people would accuse you oh you you don't believe that no I believe that it's it's my foundation of the doctrine of baptisms laying on of hands resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment verse 3 and this we will do if God permit and I believe in this last day I've said this before that he's permitting us to go on not to a different foundation but to build up farther on that foundation that's already been laid for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted of the good Word of God and the powers of the world to come and well, I'm gonna stop right there because I don't want to get bogged down in all of this but I want to show you that he talked about the foundation right and then he said where we're supposed to go on to he gave us an indication this we will do if God permit and then he said have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. the right foundation should lead us to being partakers of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. yes. and the powers of the world to come mm -hmm. so we have a foundation that Jesus laid and the foundation that Jesus laid should lead us to who the Holy, the Holy Ghost you'll see it over and over and over again in scriptures that it's leading you to him you get the fundamental things straight and they should point in a certain direction first Peter chapter 3 and then verse 18 for Christ also hath once suffered for sins the just for the unjust mm -hmm. would this be considered part of your foundation mm -hmm. that Christ suffered for sins right. the just he was just he suffered the sins for the unjust that would have been us mm -hmm. foundational that he might bring us to God mm -hmm. he laid the foundation he laid the fundamentals just for the unjust paid for your sins that he might bring you to God well who is God God the Holy Ghost and we see that that was his ministry mm -hmm. clean us up so the Holy Ghost could come into us mm -hmm. and we could have a relationship with the Holy Ghost and walk with the Holy Ghost as God in the earth which you couldn't do before Jesus came right. are you here mm -hmm. fundamental the foundation was to lead us to the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. here we see it again did you see that read down to verse 22 
who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God what if I ask that as a question who is in heaven and at the right hand of God Jesus, Jesus is in heaven at the right hand of God well he came into the earth to bear our sins that we might be with God well he sent God the Holy Ghost to be with us so so the culmination of the gospel of these fundamentals was to bring us to the Holy Ghost and knowing him as God mm -hmm. so our destination through the foundation and the fundamentals is the Holy Ghost to know him to walk with him as God in the earth today mm -hmm. the Father's in heaven Jesus is at his right hand and who is God in the earth but the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. now communion would be considered a fundamental of your faith it'd be considered a foundation of your faith what should those lead us to if we're doing it correctly it should lead us to God mm -hmm. and it should lead us to the Holy Ghost as God yes. first Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he break it and said say and said, and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me now we just said that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father so we're doing this in remembrance of him what he did when he was here on the earth remember verse 25 and after the same manner he also took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the New Testament in my blood this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you do show the Lord's death till he come has he come no. so what age are you in it has to be the age of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. so these things apply to the age of the Holy Ghost the age that we are in where the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today are you here mm -hmm. this doctrine this foundation is pointing to who the Holy Ghost when it says till he comes that means he's not here you just said he didn't come yet mm -hmm. if he didn't come yet he's not here mm -hmm. if he's not here he's still in heaven at the right hand of the father yes. and therefore we're in a different age than till he come age mm -hmm. does that make sense yes. what age are you in we're in the age of where the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and we walk with him mm -hmm. we are in this time the dispensation of the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and I'm showing you that these things are pointing to him they're foundational they're part of our faith we're not veering from that we're not leaving it behind mm -hmm. so to speak we're building on it and the, the correct building on it should lead to the Holy Ghost as God mm -hmm. for me when I preach I end up preaching that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words and it doesn't matter where you go in the scriptures I end up there because that's what I see mm -hmm. and I'm anointed for it and it doesn't mean I don't preach on healing it doesn't mean I don't preach on prosperity it doesn't mean I don't preach on salvation but the anointing that I'm in takes me to hear mm -hmm. I see it everywhere I see it all throughout the scriptures I just took you to two places where I showed you look at that a lot of people go I never saw that before mm -hmm. but the foundation leads to the Holy Ghost Jesus's ministry led to the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. to me it's like neon signs look at this look at this look at this everywhere mm -hmm. but my main job here is to bring people into a relationship with the Holy Ghost and not just an anointing not just a gift of speaking in tongues but to know him as a person to know him as God first Corinthians 11 verse 24 and when he had given thanks he break it the bread and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you what do you think Jesus was talking about when he had the bread and he said and he broke it and said take eat this is my body what bread was he talking about 
he was talking about his physical body bearing what sickness and disease mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 15 verse 26 but he answered and said it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs what was he talking about here she was asking for healing and deliverance mm -hmm. and Jesus called it the children's bread mm -hmm. so when Jesus is taking bread this is my body broken for you he's talking about healing in the atonement for you mm -hmm. healing is the children's bread so if you're a child of God God wants you healed Amen. get that straight it is when you're sick he wants you healed and he provided a way for that to be first Peter chapter 2 and verse 24 he bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins mm -hmm. should live under righteousness by whose stripes you were healed or by the broken his broken body mm -hmm. you were healed say I, I was, was healed. healed well if you was healed what are you now healed. you are healed say there's healing, there's healing. In, communion. in communion now that would be if you do it right because he goes on to say here but let a man examine himself let's say I'm doing this for healing and I examine myself what am I examining myself for sickness, sickness mm -hmm. right something that needs healing then he says look a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread what am I doing while I'm eating of that bread I'm eating of the children's bread I'm eating of the bread that contains healing power the spiritual bread that we're talking about eat of that bread drink of that cup for he that eats and drinks unworthily or really just not getting what's going on eats and drinks damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body you're not discerning what's going on why he broke the bread mm -hmm. he broke it for you so that you could be healed for this cause verse 30 are many weak and sickly among you and many sleep I wish God would tell us somewhere in his Bible why so many are weak and sick and dead oh wait he did right here verse 30 they didn't discern the Lord's body that he bore your sickness and carried your diseases and if you correctly say correctly correctly discern it then you can have the healing that's provided for you in it you'd be surprised how many people have never heard what I just said about that and that's that's the basics mm -hmm. by his stripes you were healed you have to properly discern that and eat of it mm -hmm. so would I be unscriptural to say that a lot of people are sick and weak and dead because they didn't discern the Lord's body mm -hmm. the opposite of that would be someone that's not weak someone that's not sick and someone that's not dead because they properly discerned the Lord's body so obvious come on I, I as a preacher need to get across to people the way to properly discern the Lord's body so that you don't have to partake of sickness and disease does this make sense yes. they either don't know how to discern it or how to appropriate it they might even have discerned it they might have read these scriptures and said wow the children's bread healings the children's bread and by Jesus stripes maybe I'm healed so they they might know it they might discern that there's healing in there are you with me mm -hmm. but they don't know how to appropriate it because we failed as preachers to walk people through it it's not that complicated mm -hmm. by Jesus stripes I was healed just the way he bore my sins he bore my sicknesses and disease mm -hmm. I might know how to appropriate forgiveness of sins mm -hmm. and the new birth but I might not know how to appropriate healing the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said 
say and said. and said so he said something do you suppose Jesus saying something is significant and important yes. he took it and said these things verse 25 after the same manner say the same manner same. also he took the cup which when he had supped saying he took the cup saying mm -hmm. he took the bread saying he took the cup saying I think I could probably say that about 40 more times but I'll spare you how did he take the cup saying, saying. how did he take the bread saying. saying so we're talking about how to appropriate these things mm -hmm. do you this also as often as you drink it in remembrance of me so if you're doing it often you could be saying it often or as often as you do it you do you eat this bread and drink this cup you do show the Lord's death till he come you do show the results of the Lord's death till he come if I take it saying I'm showing the results of his death till he comes are you getting this well all of the things of God come by faith how do you suppose healing in the atonement or through communion how is that going to come to you by faith so you have to have an understanding of the mechanisms of faith to make this work mm -hmm. it all works by faith that's part of the foundation remember that when I read the foundation and faith towards God mm -hmm. so faith is involved mm -hmm. say faith is involved. faith is involved Psalms 107 verse 2 let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy say so when you say so you're partaking of that verse of Scripture you're operating in faith that's what I'm talking about the mechanics of faith that's required to make this work and then he goes as often as you do this you are showing forth we're showing forth say showing forth, showing forth. Well, it's interesting the word showing forth there in other translations says proclaiming testifying speaking it forth when you speak it forth it manifests when you don't speak it forth it stays dormant so we're showing forth and proclaiming the reality of the dispensation that we are in that contains all the healing all the salvation all the blessing that Jesus provided by his death burial and resurrection mm -hmm. we're showing forth till he comes mm -hmm. we show it forth we're the ones that show forth say we're the ones that show forth, we're the ones that show forth. This showing forth begins by you saying it I am made manifest I show forth he doesn't show forth mm -hmm. I show forth what do I show forth the results of his death till he comes that's the age I'm in mm -hmm. say that's the age I'm in, the age I'm in. Showing, forth showing forth the results, the results. Of, Jesus of Jesus sacrifice and we're gonna do it with the Holy Ghost walking with the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today speaking in agreement with his words speaking and declaring has an enormous amount to do with the operation of faith and with walking with God how do we walk with God by speaking by saying Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12 neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once say once, once. does he have to do it more than once no, no he entered in once to the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us he doesn't have to do anything else about that he has obtained eternal redemption for us that's going to include everything you need for all eternity mm -hmm. verse 14 how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot 
to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God who is the living God the Holy Ghost is the living God are you getting this mm -hmm. Jesus said as often as you do this you do show the results of my death till I come he hasn't come yet so we're still in this age with the living God the Holy Ghost these elements are not taking us away from the Holy Ghost they're pointing us to the Holy Ghost these are things we shouldn't have to keep laying the foundation over and over again because we're going on to perfection with the Holy Ghost in fact he had one sacrifice for eternal redemption so that we would have our conscience purged to serve the living and true God so I hope I'm showing you that these elements provide for us a foundation or fundamentals that lead us to this place that we're in right now walking with God the Holy Ghost in the earth and we are to be showing forth the results of Jesus's death till he come what are some of the results the things that he paid for through his death burial and resurrection we know one of them is healing certainly one of them is being cleansed from sins another is our conscience being purged so that we can walk with the Holy Ghost another one is prosperity which I took you briefly to these are things we should be showing forth and what's one of the things showing forth means speaking it proclaiming it because that's key to faith and all of these things come by faith so we're showing forth this new reality of God the Holy Ghost walking with him in the earth worshiping him worshiping him I never heard that have you never heard that God is a spirit and they that worship him worship him in spirit in truth so we receive healing we receive prosperity we receive forgiveness of sins and we walk with the Holy Ghost as God in the earth you have any doubt which day and which age you're in no. you shouldn't we know that Jesus left he's not here what did he do on the day of Pentecost he sent the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost came into the earth did the Holy Ghost leave no. like five days later no. no he's still here so these things are things we're showing forth till he come he who Jesus till Jesus come you said he's not here he hasn't come yet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yet it's still good news yes. because we get all of those other things and walk with the Holy Ghost till he comes mm -hmm. and if you are joining us at home you have some juice and a little piece of bread welcome to join in with us here we know that Jesus took the bread and he said this is my body which was broken for you so say this after me this is his body, is his body. That, was that was broken for me, for me. I, call myself I call myself healed, healed. in Jesus name. Jesus name we know that he said this cup is the new covenant in his blood and he took it saying so say this after me this cup, this cup is the new covenant, the new covenant between, me and God between me and God in the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. I, take I take it and I'm in covenant, I'm in covenant with, God with God in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Right, now. right now say this after me the covenant, the covenant includes, prosperity. includes prosperity the covenant, the covenant includes, includes deliverance. deliverance and I now, and I now walk, walk with you with Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost as God, as God. In, the today. in the earth today and we show forth these things with Thanksgiving I think we're, you that we're healed right now people are being healed all over the place I thank you for it Holy Ghost in Jesus name and this is pleasing to you and we give you all the glory and the praise Amen Oh God.